Ferrari has big changes planned for 2024, and it needs them if it's to have any chance of getting back to winning ways in Formula 1. Hopes of fighting for the championship this year were quickly harpooned as Ferrari recognised it had problems as early as pre-season testing. Team principal Fred Vasseur has spent the season so far accentuating the positive, but finally the team has revealed the major steps that need to be taken if it's to avoid more disappointment next year. The key revelation is that the 2024 Ferrari F1 car will be a brand new design. That's significant because while teams produce new cars every year, when rules are stable, as they will be for next season, usually they take an evolutionary approach. But Ferrari's head of chassis era Enrico Cardile says that it's not taking an evolutionary approach next year. This hasn't come from nowhere, because some senior Ferrari figures have hinted at it. And here at the race, we've been talking about the need for architectural changes to be made by Red Bull's rivals for some time. But Vasseur has consistently defended the potential of the car. Just a few days before Cardile spoke, I asked Vasseur about whether next year's car required architectural changes to unlock more performance potential, only for him to reply that the lack of race pace does not come from the concept of the car. He also argued that the relatively strong qualifying pace is proof the car doesn't need drastic changes to be competitive. Vasseur is clearly reluctant to talk about the 2024 car or be seen to be making big claims, but Cardile has said the main weakness of the car is crystal clear – it's the aerodynamic characteristics. He has confirmed that significant changes will be made with the 2024 car, including core underlying parts of the design. That's to correct some architectural choices Cardile says were incorrect. He said this was constraining development. As a result, Cardile confirmed it will be a brand new car, different chassis with a different design, different rear end to allow us to better develop the car. Ferrari has repeatedly emphasised the need to continue to develop the SF23 given the rules are stable for next year, so even if specific car parts do not carry over, the lessons learned from in-season development will be relevant for the choices Ferrari makes for 2024. Cardile said that has been a crucial process and will result in further updates this season, even though the team's work at base is now fully focused on next year's machine. Cardile also disagreed with an assessment from Ferrari driver Carlos Sainz, who said recently that the car lacks consistency and argued this indicates an intrinsic lack of understanding. Sainz said that it's very difficult to predict which circuits we're going to be quick at and which we're not going to be quick, and he claimed that Ferrari's form in Hungary, where it struggled, and Belgium, where it was stronger, was the opposite of its pre-event expectations, saying there is maybe something intrinsic that we don't fully understand and we cannot predict very well. Cardile's counterpoint is that the Ferrari is now at least performing predictably through a weekend. Therefore, while the 2023 Ferrari hasn't been very successful, the lessons learned from it could lay the foundations for a much stronger future. The big question is, exactly what does Ferrari need to achieve with these changes? To understand that, let's look back to the start of last year. Ferrari produced a visually distinctive car. It featured heavily scalloped top surfaces of the side pods and looked dramatically different to the Red Bull. At first it seemed like Ferrari had nailed it, given Charles Leclerc won two of the first three races. There were two more wins, one for Leclerc and one for Sainz, but after that its form dropped off alarmingly. Expectations were that an evolution of the car would allow Ferrari to challenge this year, but even in pre-season testing in Bahrain it was clear that the car was plagued by an inconsistency in performance. Sainz was the first to hint at the scale of the problem publicly. He said during the season opening Bahrain Grand Prix weekend that the capacity of development of the Red Bull direction is a lot higher than Ferrari's. At May's Miami Grand Prix, subtle floor and diffuser changes were made as part of what Ferrari senior engineer Jock Clear described as an attempt to make the car more benign and close the balance window. He said the aim was to give the driver a more consistent balance through medium speed, high speed, low speed corners, as well as improve the car in the braking, entry and exit phases. This was followed in June's Spanish Grand Prix with a major upgrade that was the first sign of a step away from Ferrari's original side pod concept with a downwash ramp added. The team admitted this was a significant change in the way the airflow around the side pods was being used. However, as Clear pointed out, this was primarily about the direction of floor development. Since then there have been a few new front wings as Ferrari has continued to chip away at the problem. Its early season troubles with overworking the tyres have at least eased a little bit, but it's still a difficult car to drive. Leclerc went as far as describing the fact next year's car will be more revolution than evolution as a relief. That's because of how tricky it is to drive. 
Leclerc, of course, will already have some idea of the intended characteristics of next year's car. As Sainz has said, not only has the 2024 machine been in the wind tunnel for some time, but also in Ferrari's driver in loop simulator. A glance at the simple performance numbers means things don't look too bad for Ferrari. It has the second fastest car on average, and that's what Vasseur keeps pointing to as he accentuates the positive, but that's based on single lap performance in qualifying. On race day, things are much more difficult. That's partly down to the prodigious speed of the Red Bull, but also the fact Ferrari's direct rivals, including Mercedes, can outpace it. That means Ferrari has managed only three podium finishes so far this year and languishes fourth in the Constructors' Championship. There were no upgrades for the recent Dutch Grand Prix, although Vasseur has promised there will be new parts later this season. And Ferrari needs them, because the Dutch Grand Prix weekend was dreadful. Sainz finished fifth, but he felt that was punching above the weight of the car that he reckoned was only the sixth quickest at Zandvoort. The clerk had a terrible weekend, crashing and qualifying, and then retiring having been off the pace thanks to floor damage. He went as far as describing Zandvoort as the most difficult weekend of the season in terms of balance and drivability. That indicates that for all the progress Ferrari has made this year, it's really only fiddling around the edges to improve a fundamentally limited car. That's why the real focus is next year, and Ferrari needs to get its architectural changes right if it's to unlock the performance potential needed to have any chance to re-emerge as a threat for wins and titles. Changing your car design is all well and good, but only if you go in the right direction. So what should we expect from the 2024 Ferrari? The two key areas Cardile cited as the main architectural changes are the rear end of the car and the monocoque. So why those? Well, the key to generating performance under these rules is the ground effect floor. Now that's effectively a bolt-on aerodynamic part, so while the floor will evolve plenty, the other changes are what will allow it to be maximised. Remember, design legend Adrian Newey took a particular interest in the suspension design of these cars during the design process at Red Bull. That's resulted in a car that has a compliant mechanical platform, but one that is also able to hold the floor at aerodynamically favourable ride heights. That is critical to the effectiveness of the car, with the anti-squat and anti-lift characteristics at the rear vital. Ferrari's promise of a completely new rear end in 2024 suggests a new gearbox casing and modified rear suspension configuration. It's possible Ferrari might choose to follow Red Bull's lead and switch from pull rod to push rod rear suspension. But most importantly, it will want to emulate the anti-squat and anti-dive characteristics achieved by Red Bull. To do this, Red Bull has mounted the rearmost arm of the upper wishbone higher. This geometry helps to hold the rear end in a desirable ride height window rather than compressing as the load builds. This is all part of Red Bull's superb platform control, but to achieve that it had to add a structure to the top of the gearbox to make the inboard mountings for the suspension possible. The monocoque changes might be more subtle, but will be all about optimising the packaging of the side pods and the front of the floor and Venturi tunnel inlets. The monocoque influences where the mandatory side impact structures are placed, so it plays an important role in defining the aerodynamic potential. That's why Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff has admitted Mercedes would have designed a new monocoque for introduction mid-season, but for the constraints of the cost cap as part of its recovery efforts. So Mercedes too has architectural changes planned to unlock more potential. It's possible there may also be changes to the front suspension and side pod shape as part of Ferrari's new car. But the key thing is that Ferrari creates a car with a structure that doesn't limit its development. Maybe it will be a Red Bull clone, but ideally Ferrari will want to hit on some other ideas that could allow it to eclipse F1's dominant team. That might be asking a lot, but what matters is that Ferrari has recognised and at least partly understood its weaknesses. It is also taking the right action to eliminate limiting factors in the architecture of the car that are impeding development this year. Whether it works or not will depend on how deeply Ferrari really understands its problems, as opposed to simply following the direction Red Bull has set. That's something that will become clear next year, but as Leclerc recently admitted it will be very difficult to catch Red Bull before the major rule changes in 2026, it's clear that if Ferrari is to have any chance of doing so, the brand new car for 2024 must be on the money.